In today's video, we're going to go over how to import a STL file to create a 3D relief in vCarve Desktop version 10.503. You get a lot of questions about, hey, can you do a, a 3D relief, a cut? Um, this will be a tutorial on how to actually import the file, the STL file, um, change it up, alter it, and make the tool pass for it. Okay, so let's start here. First, you're going to go to the left-hand side, create a new file. All right, it's going to come up. I like, this is where you set your job size, your dimensions of the board you're cutting. <clears throat> I'm going to do 20 inches wide and 11.25 inches high. And for this project, I'm actually going to do two boards um, glued together um, and then leveled off, right? I'm going to use two 1 by 12 by 20 inch sections. Um, I'm going to glue them together. It'll make one and a half inches. Uh, I'll plane it just to even it out and flatten it. But these are the dimensions I'm working off of. Okay. Select the appearance. I'm going to do the pine for appearance just for looks. Click OK. All right. So it brings you to the screen. First things first, if you look at the bottom hand side of the screen all the way down, by drawing, modeling, clip art, and layers, you're going to collect or click modeling. Then at the upper left hand corner, the first folder, it's import a component or 3D model. You're going to click on this. And this is where you're going to pull your STL file into the program. Wherever you have it saved, um, just click on it and then hit open. And then it'll bring the file into the program. Depending on how big the file is, this could take, um, you know, 15, 30 seconds, or, you know, depending on how fast your computer is. My computer's been acting a little slow, but um, let's give it a shot here. Okay, so it's pulling it in. It's thinking, it's thinking. I might be using too big of a file, but this is something I want to do. It looks pretty cool, and I want to see how it comes out. Okay, there it is. So I'm going to do this spider portrait. It looks pretty cool. A lot of detail. Now we're going to just fix it up a little. Um, down here, if you see this red box down here, that's the actual work area job size. And you can see how big this spider portrait is. It's huge, right? So we're, we're going to have to shrink that up um, to fit our job dimensions. And also it's facing the wrong direction. So we want to turn that. So on the left-hand side for initial orientation, we're going to switch this. We're going to go plus 90 degrees. Okay, this should switch it. Okay, there you go. It flopped it sideways. Uh, it'll match the, the board then that I'm when I'm cutting it. All right, next we're going to center the model. So it's sitting right above it. So center. It'll place it right above it. All right, so you can't see it, but it's it's in there. Um, it's right on top of my work material. Okay, so next thing we want to do is change the model size. Left-hand side, model size, you see a car, then it has all the dimensions. It has a Z height, X and Y, we're going to change those up. Right now it's showing 35 inches thick, 400 inches wide, and 166 inches wide or tall. That's uh, pretty crazy. Okay, so we're going to fix that. So first, unlock the XYZ ratio. First, we're going to change the Z. We're going to change this to 1.35 inches. That's how thick I want the cut to be into the 1.5 inch thick material I'm using. Um, next, I want to match up the width, which my board is 20 inches. I want to do 18.5 inches, which is um, 0.75 inches on each side that it's taking off. And then for the the height, I want to change it from 11, the board's 11.25 inches. This, I want to make 10 inches, okay? Actually, we're going to do 9.75 inches. All right, then we're going to hit apply. So it'll change all the dimensions on it. And that's my dog barking. So she says hi. All right, there we go. Now we're going to click center under model size. This will make sure it's properly positioned in the, the template for it. 
Okay, so there you go. And I'll just move this around a little if it lets me. I want to kind of see how it looks. All right, so there you go. You can see it's sitting in the middle of the board. Okay. Let's see if I can get a different angle on here. All right. Maybe a sideways X view on top. So there it is. That's on top, right? That's the top angle. That's the side angle. So you can see the image within the material. All right. See up here, there's this little gap. I want to raise the model up so it's just at the top of the material. Okay. And you do that over here under the zero plane positioning in the model. I want to actually increase the depth below the model. So, or I'm sorry, decrease. See, that's the opposite direction. All right, we want to go the opposite. Just play around with it until you, you see where it's properly centered. All right, a little too much. It's 0. 0.4752. That's way too high. So, or it's one inches below. That's We're going to miss the whole top half of the, the model if we leave it like this. So we got to lower it. My computer's being a little slow, so it's making it a little tricky. Okay, so depth below top. Just keep playing with it. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So the model's 1.35 inches. You got room on the top and room on the bottom. Okay, so when you're cutting it. Hit OK. All right, there you go. It gives you a preview of what it's going to look like. like pop, well, not what it's going to look like after the cut, but this is just the positioning of the model. It looks pretty good. Click on your things up top in the right-hand corner to position it to kind of get an idea how it's going to look. Um, I usually click on these, get all aspects, top, side. See, there you go, right there. Z, X, and Y angles. I think that looks pretty good. Flip it over. All right, so now the fun part. All right, so what we're going to do, so go back to 2D mode. We're going to click on this, and this is very important because after I do the cut for the, the 3D tool path, I'm going to want to cut it out. And if it's a STL model, it's not going to have any vectors on it, okay? So you have to create an outline vector. So go to 2D, 2D view, and then you're going to go to modeling again, and then at the top, there's these options under 3D model tools. Import, change the properties, create a vector boundary around selected components. That's what you want to click. So once this is highlighted, <clears throat> you're going to click the third option from the left, create vector outline. Okay. Just make sure you have that, that selected. Now, if you click right here, you see that? Here, I'll zoom in. See this pink line? You got a vector surrounding it, so that's good, okay? So after I do the 3D model relief cut, I can come back in and do the final cut. It'll be a profile toolpath to cut it out, all right? And then you'll just have to sand it. Okay, let's bring it up in the middle. Let's make it a little bigger. All right, so we can click on it. That's how it's looking. All right, now the fun part. We get to create the tool pass. This is where you have to be a little creative with the bits you're using and the feeds and speeds. I'm not going to tell you what feeds and speeds to use because I don't know what you know router you have. If you have a Shapeoko. Um, XXL or whatever you have, right? Bob CNC router. Um, I'm not sure what all of you are using, but if you're using um, VCarve desktop version 10.503, this will um, allow you to create the tool pass for that, okay? And you're going to have to play around with your bits and feeds and speeds. All right, 
that being said, let's make these tool paths. All right, perfect. So this is highlighted. Okay, we're going to create the first tool path. Open up your tool path settings on the right hand side. You're going to go down here where it says 3D roughing tool path. You don't have to do a 3D roughing tool path, but it's a huge time saver and I definitely recommend it. So we're going to create the 3D roughing tool path first and then we're going to do the 3D finishing tool path. So let's click on 3D roughing tool path. All right, the material setup, it's 1.5 inches thick. We're going to start from the bottom left hand corner. Um, the Z is the material surface. Gap above the material is zero. Gap below the material is 1.505 inches, okay? And you can do your clearance path. I usually do 0.2 inches um, just to give it enough clearance. I don't want it to break the bit or anything. Everything else looks good. Hit OK. Now, let's select our tool. We're going to use a 1 quarter inch end mill. And I'll click on it. You can't see it on the screen for whatever reason, but it's going to be a quarter inch end mill. It's a two flute. Pass per depth is going to be 0.2 inches. Step over is going to be 20%, so 0.05 inches. You can play around with this to speed up the cut. I'm doing 19,500 RPMs at 95 inches per minute feed rate and 45 inches per minute plunge rate. Okay, so I hit OK. Now I'm going to select my cutting parameters. I want to do the model boundary. I don't want to do the whole board. If you click material boundary, it'll, it'll shave off everything. Right? I want to do the model boundary. So I'm clicking that. Machining allowance, I got set at 0 0.005 inches. That's kind of aggressive. We can do 0 0.01 if we want. Um, actually, we'll do 0 0.085 inches. Um, you can play around with that. We're going to do a 3D raster along the X, so left to right. Safe Z is 0.2 inches above the material. Looks good. And then we're going to calculate. Okay. The allowance left on is greater than 20% of the total tool diameter. Leaving large allowances slows the tool path calculation time and may need to finish tool breakage breakages or may lead to tool finish breakages. Okay, so it's giving me a warning, so let's change it up. So let's hit okay. So the allowance is too great. So let's change this up. The machine doesn't like it. You can play around with it. Um, we're going to actually cancel this. So delete. And then we're going to we're going to do it over, okay? So we're going to do a 3D roughing toolpath model boundary that we're going to do the machining allowance 0.05 3D raster along the X, left to right, calculate. Okay. All right, Vetric or V-Carve seem to like that a lot better. You can see the blue lines are the tool paths. Let's do a preview and see how it looks, okay? So we're just gonna go preview visible tool path and watch the magic go. So what it's doing here, it's just taking out the bigger chunks, the not as much detail. It's allowing you to clear more material quicker um, before you're doing your fine detail. I probably could have been a little bit more aggressive with the depth of the cut, but for this demonstration purposes, um, I'm just doing the, the settings I currently have. Now, like I said before, you can play with your dimensions or your bit size and your feeds and speeds okay it doesn't all have to be the same and you can play with it okay <clears throat> all right so that's the roughing tool path it's done now we're going to create so leave it like that and then now we're going to create a 3d finishing tool path click that 
For this, I'm going to use, and this, this isn't super fine detail, I'm going to use a 1 8 inch ball nose, okay? <clears throat> it's going to be, it's a two flute ball nose, uh, 1 8 inch. It's going to be doing a 0.0313 step over, which is 25%. Um, that's a little aggressive. I'm going to bring that down to 20% step over. 18,500 RPMs. <clears throat> like I said, you can play with this and get it to the specifications you want. All right, hit OK. <clears throat> Raster setup, offset zero, safe Z, 0.2 inches, 3D finish, calculate. All right, so it's calculating the position or the tool pass right now. We're going to do preview visible toolpath. See, as the bit's going over, you can see the details starting to come out. Um, you can use like a tapered ball nose, um, something else, depending on how much detail you want and how much time you have. Um, but there you go. That's it. That's it for the 3D part. Now, like I said before, I want to cut it out. So what I'm going to do is go back to do the 2D view. I'm going to select the vector right here. See it lights up in pink. I'm going to go to 3D cut or 3D view. Go to tool pass upper right hand corner. Then I'm going to create a profile tool path. I'm going to use a <clears throat> quarter inch end mill. We're going to go 1.65 inches deep. That'll give us 0.15 inches lower than the actual width of the, the material. This will allow us to cut through it. Um, we're going to do inside left okay, of the machine vector. So we're going to machine it on the inside left. Okay, So if the line's right here, it's going to machine it this way. It'll cut out some of this extra material here and make it look cleaner. We're going to add ramp plunge moves at half an inch, and we're going to add tool pass, okay? And then we're going to calculate. Brings up a warning. It doesn't show it on my screen, but or your screen, but it shows it on mine. It tells you material thickness 1.5 inches, maximum tool path is 1.65 inches. This will result in cutting through the base of the material. This is fine. That's what we want to do. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to preview visible toolpath. And there you go. So we created the model, the 3D relief, and then the, the cutting out of the actual model for the last. So you can play around with this a little. Swing it around, look closer to see if you think that's enough detail. I like it. You can kind of decide what you want to do. And then go from there. All right, thanks for watching today. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll try to help you out as much as possible. Um, if you have any issues with STL files or you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe and share this video. Um, I do this for fun. Um, you know, I enjoy making things and showing people how to do it. I did a lot of learning on my own, a lot of research. I'm just trying to make a, an easy place where you can see things I cut, different you know styles, different ways of doing regular standard cuts, you know, V-carve cuts, 3D relief cuts, um, and so forth. So, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.